Hello, so potentially the most boring video I've done to date. This is about a trip down to TaylorMade HQ. It's not boring. It's interesting in the sense that I have no script for this as usual. So I'm a little bit worried that I might just start rambling and that there'll be absolutely no order to any of it. But I'll give it a go, see how it comes out. And if I think it's good enough, then we'll put it out. One of the things that was interesting about it was the tour room. Now, the whole thing was designed to give us a better insight and better knowledge into the new products and all the rest of it but the thing that I took away from it was the feeling of being like a kid in a sweetie shop when I went into the tour building room so it's like a little room that's kind of locked it should really have armed guards at the front of it to be honest because some of the stuff that's in there is just like it's got basically all the tour player stuff in there and they build all the stuff for the tour players in this little room when they come to Europe. And it was just really interesting talking to those guys because they were talking about little things that they do for the tour players and little things that they the tour players like and all this sort of stuff. So it was just really interesting. They had rows and rows of incredibly expensive shafts. So you're talking like four or five hundred pound shafts and just 10 to the dozen in there. They also had all the stuff set out for like Tiger Woods, Rory McIlroy, Dustin Johnson, spares for when they play in tournaments in Europe. So, you know, you could just pull out of the rack Tiger Woods' driver shaft so that if he needs one when he's playing in Europe, then there it is all gripped and ready to go. And some of them ungripped, but this one particular one was, was gripped. Unfortunately, the picture I took of it is a bit blurry, but it is brilliant to see the shafts that they use. Now, the overriding thing you notice in there that is every single shaft is extra stiff and not just extra stiff sometimes he said they're actually a little bit stiffer than that and they tip trim them to be even stiffer than that and I picked up a uh, three wood that had Rory McIlroy's three wood it was just like a poker stick it was just so stiff it just felt horrible it felt like there was no flex in it whatsoever and it would be the hardest work club to hit in your life and he's just hitting it for fun all of the clubs as I say were X flex one of the interesting things that they did show us in there was that they pulled out a tray and it, it was all different heads so they had eight degree heads they had a drawer of nine, ten, whatever. But within that, all the heads were labelled with little extra details. So one would say 8.1 degrees or very square at address or open at address or 8.2 degrees loft. So they're just measured to the nth degree for the tour players and there's certain players that like certain things like they like to know that it's a tiny bit over 8 degrees or they like to know that the face angle is going to be slightly more to their liking. So they keep heads with that in mind. They're not different, the heads. They There's a school of thought that they're not playing with the same things. The guy said in there that they are playing with the same things. It's just that everything's like tested to the nth degree to work work out the lofts and to work out the, the angles and that sort of thing so that everything is as they would want it. It was drawers and drawers of different grips. They had grips for like Paul McGinley that still gets stuff and that was like a 40, 50 pounder grip, leather style grip. They had grips for Tommy Fleetwood that were specially made by Iomic, a sort of gel grip and, and specially made in Everton blue because that's the team he supports. So there's all these little things that you start to learn and all sitting there ready to go. There was balls that, for all the different players some have personalised logos on them as well. The gloves were all there. They're all completely made specifically for players, so they're slightly different sizes to what you would potentially get in the shops. Hats, hats again, all completely different sizes and made to measure for the players and then all the different logos put on them separately and they're, they're sitting there all ready to go as well. There was putters, there was a, a whole load of putters which they you know could come in and try and that sort of thing and they don't do tour only putters but occasionally they'll do slightly different things with like the lines on the putters so they might have a slightly thicker line than the model that you buy in the shop but some of the players just use the exact same ones as the ones in the shops but there are some players who'll say oh I'd quite like that line taken away or I'd like that line made thicker and they do that for them but the head itself is just the same that was good to know because you know obviously 
Scotty Camera and that sort of thing, you get loads of different ones that you just never make the shops. You never see them. Circle T models and all this that you don't, you can't buy. So other little things that they talked about were the fact that Rory was in love with the QI10 head because of the way the head, the crown wraps round onto the face and there's a, a lovely straight line that he can align his club face onto and he was desperate to get that onto a club so the crown covers more surface on the top than it used to. He was dead keen to get that in play and I think that's why they, they let him have it a little bit earlier than they normally do. Apparently, if I got this right, he uses the standard QI10, not the LS one. Most of the tour players use the LS one, the low spin one. Back in that room, there was also, you know, Tiger Woods bladed irons. I saw them properly. I have. I know you can just buy them anyway, but they would just look so difficult to hit. They're just absolute knives. The three iron just looked horrendous. Just a horrible, horrible thing. I mean, nice bit of art, you know, to have in your collection, but not to try and hit a golf ball with, not not advised. One of the things the guy said was that they're all good, really good players, the fitters and the, the build guys in, in the tour workshop. And they said that they took all the shafts one day, because they're all X-Flex, but they're all different types, all different types of shaft. And they thought, well, we know what they're supposed to do. We know what they're supposed to say they do. But let's go and hit them and see what they actually do and see if we can notice a lot of difference. So these guys are all plus handicaps and that, and they hit the ball properly. And they said that it's really just a feel thing. He said, you know, you could put a shaft in a driver that is supposed to keep it down. And if it was going too low, you'd instinctively hit up on it a little bit more to try and increase the launch angle. And you would just make it work for you. But you would have to swing in a slightly different way to kind of make it work. And he said that the best shafts and the ones that you should really go for and, and have a think about this when you're getting fitted is the ones you feel most comfortable with, the ones that feel the easiest. And I don't know that's common sense in a way, but it doesn't always happen because sometimes you can hear that a shaft is high launch or low launch or whatever and it's supposed to do something but actually in reality you fight against it or don't fight enough for it and it doesn't work very well for you you need to get the shaft that kicks and moves in the right way for you in the way that you load the shaft and so as long as you're in the ballpark in terms of like the stiffness the actual kick points and bend points is a, almost a question of feel more than it is what you should be using is it's because as I say you'll try and manipulate your swing to make up for a shaft that maybe isn't kicking or feeling right for you. And that was one of the takeaways we had from the fitting that we did as well because there was lots of tailor-made demo guys there as well and they were talking about fitting in general and that sort of thing and, and one of the things that came out of it was to not be afraid to try things in fitting you know you can quite often they say be surprised by something so something shouldn't really work for somebody but they try it and it does work there's so many little different forces at work when you're hitting a golf ball and positions and things that happen to the shaft and the head and the way it moves that you should expand your boundaries a bit so sometimes it can be you know a better player won't touch a regular shaft for instance because no no i'm a better player i'll use stiff so what I'm saying here is that you should try that sometimes. You should let go of any sort of preconceived ideas you've got about what you should have and actually just push the boat out and actually try some different stuff because you might be surprised what happens. And it doesn't really matter what shafts or types of flex you've got. It's... It's what works best for you. So that was interesting. The other thing they said was that the sleeves in the tailor-made, so the, the hosel is really important because yes, it changes the loft, but some people don't realize how much it actually changes the face angle. There will be a lot of people out there are aware of that, but it actually changes a huge amount. It can change it as much as four degrees in terms of open or closed. So it's really important that, you know, if you're playing around with these yourself, that you take that into account. You know, if you're slicing it and you think it's going too high and you decrease the loft, well, that's opening it as well. You're making it even harder for yourself to square the face. So you need to watch with things like that. The Max head they were talking about is the most forgiving head. It's 10,000k 
of forgiveness and they were saying that everyone really should try that because there will be a loft and a face setting that can work for you. If you think about it, you can go from square to four degrees open and closed, you're going to find a face angle and a loft between all the variations that they've got that would actually suit you in terms of launch angle. And the fact that it's the most forgiving means that you should try that club at some point. Now it won't work for everybody because there's a little bit more draw bias built into it and some people just can't abide hitting it left like myself, I don't want to hit it left. So there's different heads that you, you shouldn't discount just because in theory you think you should be using LS or, or whatever. I mean my favourite's the middle one, the one that supposedly Rory uses. I just like the way it sits, it sits slightly open even at just its standard so I really like the look of that. So the rest of it was just a tour around the factory which was really interesting to see all the processes that they have in place. I mean, it's a really slick production in terms of the way that they build clubs from start to finish and all these different machines that they have and some of the stuff that they've actually invented themselves. So like the lie machine was this huge big clamp thing with a bullseye and the guy has to get the, the bullseye in the middle to get the lies to go flat or upright. You still have to bend it with a bar, but it's, it's accurate to the nth degree. Real attention to detail in terms of the, the build and the tolerances. You've got everything's got to be absolutely perfect. It gets double and triple checked before it goes out the door. And yeah, it just looked a really slick operation. So that's probably all the main points I can think of. I'm probably missing out a fair bit but you know probably rambled on enough as it is well done if you've stuck around very impressed you know that shows that you're one of the sort of super fans if you're still here if you've got any questions you know obvious things that i've stupidly forgotten to say then just put them in the comments and i'll get back to you but i think we'll probably leave it there thanks for watching if you haven't subscribed please subscribe and i will see you in the next one